Hi and welcome to the podcast. I'm Peter Argyle and today I'm going to talk about IP failover. IP failover is one of the many topics covered in the Advanced System Administration course. Please see our website for details. Firstly, what is IP failover? Well, the concept is fairly straightforward. It allows us to set up two servers in a master backup relationship so that if the master fails, the backup will assume the role of the master on the network. Both servers are configured and connected to the same subnet. While the master is functioning properly, it sends a heartbeat to the backup to let it know that everything is okay. Some good examples for using IP failover would be the need to have high availability of AFP services or web services. The basic requirements are two OS10 servers where the primary interface on each server is connected to the LAN. A second interface on each machine is connected to provide a private network between the servers. The second interface can be firewire configured with IP addresses or a separate Ethernet network. This is done to reduce false alarms where the server loses one of the network connections. As long as the backup server is receiving the heartbeat on one of the interfaces, it will not initiate the failover. To configure the servers, you need to edit the slash etc host config file on each server. For the master server, we need a single line as shown. This has the IP addresses of the machine it needs to broadcast the heartbeat to. For the backup server, we enter each IP address for the master's interfaces on a single line followed by an email address for sending notification of the failover. When the master server is restarted, it runs a startup item called IP failover. This in turn starts a process called heartbeat D. When the backup server is restarted, the same script starts a process called failover D. We now have a working solution, with the master notifying the backup that all is OK. So now, let's look at what happens when a failover situation occurs. For whatever reason, our master server fails. The backup server stops receiving the heartbeat on both interfaces, and a sequence of events takes place so that the backup server will respond to requests using the master server's IP address. Firstly, failover D detects no broadcasts from the master server. It then executes the notify failover script, which uses the email address configured in the host config file to notify the admin of the failure. Next, Failover D executes the process failover script, which in turn executes a test script. By default, this script is empty, but can be used to check for additional conditions and prevent false alarms. This happens if the test script returns false. The process failover script will then quit and the backup server does not acquire the master's IP address. If the test script returns true, the process failover script continues and executes any pre-acquisition scripts. These are used to prepare the backup server before acquiring the master's IP address. The process failover script then configures the network interface and adds the master's IP address. Finally, it executes the post-acquisition scripts, which could be used to notify the admin that failover has completed successfully. Failover takes approximately 30 seconds to complete. If you'd like to learn more about this technology, I look forward to seeing you on the Advanced System Administration course. 
please see our website for details. Thanks for watching.